Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 501st Combat Support Wing's third virtual town hall. My name is Technical Sergeant Aaron Thomason from the 501st Combat Support Wing's Public Affairs Office, and I'll be handing things over to Colonel Wynn for his opening remarks and introductions of our various subject matter experts. Hey, thanks, Aaron. Uh, thank you to everybody who's joining us, whenever it is you're watching and listening in. Uh, special thanks to all of our panel members. As Aaron said, We've done a couple uh, resilience fairs over the past few weeks, but we thought it's probably time for us to go back to more of a question and answer forum. And so we're bringing to you a whole new panel uh, for, this, for this virtual town hall. I wanna go around and introduce everybody to you really quickly. So uh, besides myself, we have of course with us our command chief, Chief Dan Keene from uh, the 501st Combat Support Wing Public Health Emergency Office. Uh, we have Major Eileen Ebinger all the way from RAF Crowton, uh, our comptroller, so the wing finance guru, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Croc Swap. <laughs> our wing logistics officer is joining us today to talk about TMO and PCS movements. That's Major Jose Quintanilla. From RAF Crowton as well, we have our 422nd Air Base Squadron Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Matt Ramstack, who is uh, one of our Wings personnel experts who's gonna talk to us about some of the changes coming up. We have all the way from RAF Milden Hall, our civilian personnel office specialist, Ms. Tammy Mitchell. Thank you for joining us, Tammy. And also from Alkenbury Middle High School, our principal, Mr. Michael Jimerson. Last but certainly not least, joining us from AFES, we have Mr. Mark Gusky. So to our panel, thank you for taking the time. Uh, Aaron, let's get back to you so we can get right into the question and answer. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much for that, sir. Uh, we have about 20 questions that uh, we've received from people throughout the wing. And we're gonna start off with a, a pair of questions actually for you, Colonel Wint. And the first one is just, what is the situation in the wing right now? It's the great question. It's the question that's on everybody's mind, I think. I would say uh, in the wing, as we are across the UK and Norway, we've been in lockdown in some form or fashion for literally over two months now. Uh, and, and that's where we stand. Overall, I would say we're doing remarkably well as a wing and as a community. Uh, it's phenomenal to see how people have responded to some extremely, extraordinarily challenging times. Uh, we've had lots of curveballs thrown our way uh, and we have coped with them and we've banded together and as you've heard me say before crisis brings out the best in people and i've seen that across the wing again and again uh, but we can't let up now even as things start to look better across the uk across norway across europe and elsewhere now is not the time to let up we don't want to lose some of those great gains that we've made over the past couple of months. So we are taking a cautious approach. Uh, I know you have a lot of questions about specifics that we're gonna get after today, but I would say overall, my approach for the wing is that we are gonna err on the side of caution. We are gonna err on the side of protecting our population and keeping everyone healthy because we don't wanna come out of this lockdown too soon only to have to go straight back into it or worse. So uh, we are we're going to remain cautious, but at the same time, we are now looking ahead to the PCS season. We know there's a lot of airmen and service members and families and civilians across our wing that are getting ready to move this summer. And so now is the time to start looking ahead and planning, even if we can't quite start those movements just yet. So hopefully we're going to address some of those issues for you today. But overall, I would say uh, the, the the site picture for me across the wing is we're doing remarkably well. Uh, that said, uh, let me just say, if, if you are not feeling like you're doing remarkably well, if you are struggling and you are facing challenges, by all means, please reach out. Please do not suffer in silence. Uh, there's a lot of resources at your disposal. If you want, go back on this page and you can go back and watch our previous uh, resiliency fairs and you'll see lots and lots of great resources, lots of helping agencies that, that can assist. So please do reach out if you need help. All right, thank you, sir. We really appreciate that, that update on the state of the wing. The second question, um, as I'm sure we all are aware, uh, the United Kingdom's Prime Minister Boris Johnson released an updated set of guidelines and a exit from lockdown game plan uh, this past Sunday. And so this question is related to that. 
How is the wing incorporating the United Kingdom's updated guidance this week and what adjustments are being made? Yeah, it's another great question. Uh, I would say we are, we are looking very, very closely at our host nation guidance here in the UK, uh, as well as our squadron in Norway and Stavanger. Uh, what we're trying to do is lay out the best way forward for our wing. How do we responsibly move forward as I mentioned before, without having to backslide, without making things worse. And so our team laid out for me actually just this week uh, and what we're calling the open the base plan. And what we did is we laid out the host nation guidance from the United Kingdom in particular against our Department of Defense guidance, those health protection conditions that we are, that we are in. Uh, right now, we remain in health protection condition, HPCon Charlie. And so, Right this very moment, we don't have a lot of leeway to relax some of those restrictions. However, we are looking forward to the potential to do some of those things. And again, that's what our team laid out for me, the host nation guidance, as well as our DOD guidance. And now what we're doing is, number one, watching what our host nation does, seeing what the United Kingdom does with their restrictions and how they start to come out. Uh, and then compare that and lay it alongside of what we as the, as the Department of Defense and the military are doing. So I would expect in the coming weeks and months, we will be able to take some very responsible steps forward, but we're gonna do those in close coordination with what our host nation is doing here. Uh, some things of course might look just slightly different on base, but overall we are paying very close attention to our host nation guidance because we wanna make sure we are not uh, at odds with, with what the United Kingdom here or Norway is doing. Fantastic, thank you very much, sir. So the next set of questions have to do with uh, health guidance. And so I, I think uh, our subject matter expert for that is gonna be Major Ebinger, our public health emergency officer. Ma'am, when returning to work, what will the process be to keep everyone safe? Thanks for that question. Um, of course, safety is always paramount um, within our base population, especially within the workplace. And so what public health is tasking leaders to do uh, is to propose plans in order to keep, keep their staff safe. And these are, are plans that need to touch on how they can continue to physically distance within the workplace, um, maintain hygiene to prevent spread of infection, um, and also clean and keep the facilities clean to prevent spread of infection, and as well as uh, assist us in uh, identifying any close contacts if for some reason there were a confirmed case within the facility or the workplace. All right, fantastic. Thank you for, the, for your answer, ma'am. The next question is for you as well, and it is, there are concerns about returning to normal too quickly, both on and off base. Are you able to speak to those? Sure, thanks for that question. Um, throughout the situation, I think it's important for us always to defer to the experts. Um, and these experts, both in Public Health England and within our wing, are closely monitoring the situation and using things called gating criteria to ensure that we take the next appropriate step when we're ready and prepared. And so those gating criteria, we're looking at symptoms within the community, cases within the community, uh, and the capabilities to test uh, protect staff and also care for people that need treatment. And so before taking any kind of step, uh, those the criteria are looked at very closely. Um, and while we're advancing and loosening restrictions, we also need to be monitoring to see if maybe those uh, statistics are indicating that we need to take a step back and tighten things so that we have um, better capabilities to respond to situations. All right, thank you very much, ma'am. So the next question has to do with uh, the new UK guidelines that have been presented. And so it's a, sort of a combination of a public health question and a command question. Will the base follow the new UK guidelines allowing two people from two different households to meet in an outdoor setting if they keep the recommended distance apart? Aaron, I'll start with that one. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, here in the UK, host nation guidance is, is critical for us to watch. We do not want to do something to get out in front of our host nation. So uh, we anticipate following things like that. However, I will say with our DOD HP cons, those health protection conditions that we're following, I would say we're not quite there yet. You know, as of right now today, I'm not ready to say that that's okay, but we're working on it. 
And uh, I will kick it over to Major Ebinger because really uh, I am looking to her and to our public health team to, to walk through those steps and tell me when maybe we can do that responsibly. So uh, Eileen, you got anything to add to that? Um, no, sir, I think that's a great response. Um, I think that it's never the, the wrong answer to be more cautious than not to protect the small community that we have. I think we need to understand that um, because we are a smaller and unique community, we, we are needing to take extra precautions than maybe what the host nation is recommending. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, very wise words. Really appreciate it. So the next question actually is uh, for you, Chief Keen, our 501st Combat Support Wing uh, Command Chief. And this question is, teleworking has been great for work-life balance. Can we continue to some degree after restrictions are lifted? Yeah, great question. Thanks for that. Um, so the short answer is uh, yes, to some degree. Uh, I think it's important for us to all acknowledge that, you know, across all of our bases and all of our functions, telework has been shown to be useful uh, in some situations, but not all. Um, a lot of the work uh, that we do at all of our many bases does require physical presence. Um, that said, um, I want everybody to know uh, that all levels of leadership within the command uh, are looking to capture the lessons learned uh, as we navigate through uh, COVID-19. Um, for uh, in particular, Wing XP within our wing uh, is working with the chains of command, uh, our chains of command to capture those lessons learned. So I really encourage you, whether it's working through uh, your change of command, just make sure that uh, your good ideas and your innovations end up getting to XP so we can capture that. And as we start to build what the new normal looks like uh, for the 501st Combat Support Wing, we can try to integrate uh, some of those ideas and, and gain some efficiency. So I uh, appreciate the question. All right, fantastic, Chief. Thank you for that. We really appreciate it. The next question is a financial question. And so this is going to be for uh, Lieutenant Colonel Swap, our 501st CSW comptroller. And the question is, what updates can you provide in terms of PCS entitlements? Is there anything extra my family and I need to do if we are PCSing this summer? This is an exciting time for all of us to go through all these uh, challenges and learn the differences and the and the things of how we can approach them. Um, I really am proud to be part of the Pathfinder family and see all the things that are happening with all of us here to approach these specific challenges. I'm going to split this answer into two, two different uh, answers. First, for those that are coming inbound or coming to our Pathfinder family and then those that are going to be sadly leaving our Pathfinder family. So first, those uh, PCS inbound personnel. Well, we're excited to have you join our Pathfinder family and you're, you're coming to a really great team. Hopefully you can see that in this particular town hall that you're watching. If you delayed in route, all authorized delays in route, even those due to COVID restrictions are authorized PCS travel and per diem payments. Please work with my finance office to ensure you receive the correct entitlements upon in processing. Currently, all inbound personnel should quarantine upon arrival. And if this is the case still, when you come, please ensure that you get your orders and your arrival information to finance as soon as you can so we can start your entitlements correctly and so you can avoid debts that come from overpayments of, entitlement, uh, of entitlements while PCSing. Now, if your dependents were not authorized to come with you due to travel restrictions, passports, and visa issues, you may be authorized FSH. That is, you may continue to receive BAH for your dependents based on the expected number of days they are delayed, and you may receive single rate OHA if you enter into a lease here when you arrive. That BAH will be based on your old duty station, and you should be provided government, oh, I'm sorry, if you should be provided government housing upon arrival, this would disallow your FSH entitlement, but you should be able to work with the housing office for your options to be designated as single quarters while you await your dependents. Please let FM know if your, situ of your situation so we can help in whatever way we can. Also, if your dependents are not authorized to come with you when you travel, but, but you will be coming, <coughs> but will be coming when restrictions lift, you may be authorized FSAR. Yep, we love our acronyms. This is an allowance that is given to separated families. 
please get with my finance team to determine your eligibility for these allowances and entitlements. Again, let me welcome you to our Pathfinder team. We are excited to see you. Now for those that are finally able to leave, I know you're saying, yay, I get to get out of here. Um, we will miss you. Please know that you'll always have a home in the Pathfinder family. Now for those are, that are approved to travel to depart on a PCS, we encourage you first to maintain your leases for as long as possible and work with the housing office on your TLA options prior to your departure. Your housing entitlements will continue as long as your lease is in force. If you are forced to terminate your lease earlier than the 10 days prior to your departure, work with housing for your TLA options. All PCS travel entitlements will begin once you begin your PCS travel. For example, you outprocess the base and you depart the duty station. Authorized delays en route, even those due to COVID restrictions, are authorized PCS travel and per diem payments. You will work with your gaming finance office to secure those. Many have been notified that their DROS was extended by AFPC this week. If this is the case, please work with your lease owner to ensure your leases are extended and so housing entitlements continue. If you must vacate your residence due to previous arrangements or other reasons outside your control, work with housing for your TLA options, please. Concurrent travel with your dependents will most likely be authorized as dependents are not typically authorized to remain in country due to UK government rules on military orders. Overall, make sure you're communicating with finance to ensure you are receiving the correct entitlements in case you are wondering, we are open, but we are still providing services by appointment only. Get the 501st Wing app, download it on your phone, and you can find the link to make your appointment with the finance office today. Again, we are sad to see you go, and we are sad to see the others come in, and we're happy to see the others come in. Please know you're coming to a great team, and please know that you'll always have a place with this great Pathfinder team. Thanks. All right, thank you for that very much, sir. Uh, I think we all know that PCS is a, it can be a time of you know, real change. And that can be awkward at the best of times. So thank you for everything that you and your team are doing to look out for everyone, both leaving and arriving here at the, the Wing. And in addition, thank you also for mentioning the Wing app, which is a great communication tool. So the next question also has to do with PCS, but uh, it's more of a logistics oriented question. So this one is going to be for our wing logistics officer, Major Quintanilla. So how will the PCS process work once restrictions start to lift, sir? So good afternoon. Uh, so as far as PCSs are concerned, AFPC is doing a lot on, on their side of the house to streamline the PCSs this summer just because we've had two months where very little movement has occurred. Uh, for our wing within Crowton and within Alconbury, the, the two TMOs, uh, they're standing by ready to support. Uh, we do encourage members to, uh, you know, to practice some, you know, expectation management, right? Because we are in the UK and the UK it has been one of the most impacted countries in terms of, of how they define uh, essential workers to non-essential workers that has kind of limited some of the bandwidth that UK packers have to be able to move personnel. So uh, that is basically the, con the common denominator of how uh, personnel will be able to get scheduled to move their household goods, unaccompanied baggage. It's dependent on the packers availability to perform that move. So uh, we encourage people uh, to work with, the, uh, with, with their local TMOs to, uh, you know, schedule their household goods depending on uh, their orders. Uh, one of the recommendations from our TMO office is to delay maybe the schedule of the actual movement of personnel as far as flights is concerned because of the multiple changes and the flight availability. So uh, they've, they've told me that uh, if people wait like three weeks before their they would like to depart the UK, that, that that's probably reasonable versus trying to schedule a flight two or three months uh, when there's so many uncertainties. Uh, they are still manning the phones. They are answering inquiries via email. Um, if anybody has to go to their offices, it's recommended that they schedule an appointment and that the member goes by themselves 
um, so that we can limit the amount of people inside one office, but they are standing by ready to support our members. All right, thank you, sir. Really appreciate your response. And uh, again, just like uh, we said for the finance team, thank you to you and your team for everything that you're doing to try and smooth out what is, uh, you know, I think for a lot of people turned into a, a very difficult time frame surrounding PCS. So the next set of questions are for our force support personnel. And uh, that is going to be Lieutenant Colonel Ramstack, who is joining us from the 422nd Air Base Group. So Colonel Ramstack, the first question is, when can we expect the gym to reopen? Is there any way we can access the gym while still physically distancing ourselves? Right. So as Colonel Went mentioned, we're going by two guiding principles, our force or health protection condition situation and what the UK guidance is. Uh, if you listen to Prime Minister Johnson's address, he said, based on the conditions that were met in his plan, the earliest that we might see gyms opening on the, in, on the economy in the UK would be the 1st of July. But again, we're also constricted by the health protection conditions. So it's possible that gyms might be open again to uh, the population in general. Uh, after July 1st. But again, that's going to be contingent upon different conditions being met in the health community and on the advice of public health and Major Evinger. Hey, let me just jump in and add a little bit to what Colonel Ramstack saying as well. Some of you are probably asking yourselves, why does this sound different than what I'm hearing from my friends at Lake and Heath and Mildenhall? Because uh, some of it does. Uh, some of our restrictions and some of the way that we're coming out of this is gonna look a little bit different than the other wings even across the UK, and that's by design. Our wing has different geography, we have different bases, and we have a different mission set. So some of our decisions might not be quite in line with some of the other UK bases, but I can assure you we are looking ahead at when we are gonna be able to do some of those things as well. Thank you, we really appreciate that response, sir. The next question uh, also has to do with uh, physical fitness in the gym. <laughs> Is there any word on PT tests starting back up in June? Right, so the current guidance from uh, Air Force A1 is that uh, fitness testing is supposed to resume one June. Uh, the logistics of that uh, are yet to be determined again based on health protection conditions and uh, guidance from the, loop, from the wing and group. Um, keep in mind that the Air Force PT test was designed to be accomplished without the need for training in a gym. Uh, running can be accomplished outdoors as well as push-ups and sit-ups don't need any special equipment to uh, practice and get ready for your test. So all people under the current guidance, unless it changes, those people who are due to test in June should prepare to test in June. So, sir, if I could just uh, add a little bit more uh, to uh, Colonel Ramstack's comment with regard to PT testing. Um, we up here uh, at the 501st are watching very closely and listening very closely to any additional guidance that comes out with regard to PT testing uh, from headquarters Air Force. Uh, so bottom line is the message that Colonel Ramstack delivered about being prepared and being ready. If you have to, if you're scheduled to test in June, you gotta continue uh, to get ready for, to, for testing in June, because as it stands right now, uh, that's what we're doing. But the moment we find out that there's, there's changes that have been pushed down with regard to testing, we're not going to sit on that information. We're going to let you know. We're going to disseminate that out through the chains of command, uh, and you'll know when we know. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much, Chief. Really appreciate that. All right, so the next question is, when can we expect additional food options to be available on base? Right, uh, that is also going to be contingent upon the health protection conditions we're under, as well as what the UK guidance is and in terms of what they are willing to open up in the, uh, on the economy. What I suspect we'll see if, uh, if and when, uh, I'm sorry, not if, but when uh, food services reopen, we will see probably takeout only, uh, one entry point, one exit point, uh, maintaining physical distancing, and uh, the normal, uh, the ordinary precautions that we have become accustomed to uh, under the COVID guidance. So 
again, the UK says they, if all conditions are met, they are looking at one July at the earliest for those things to happen. But again, it's going to be contingent upon what happens outside in the real world, as well as what DOD guidance and health protection conditions allow um, from our wing and group leadership. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Really appreciate it. So the next set of questions have to do with education. And so these are going to be for Mr. Jimerson, the RF Alkenbury Middle High School principal is our uh, DODIA representative. So, sir, how will senior graduation work this year? Well, that's a good question. Uh, so safety is always our, our biggest priority. And uh, unfortunately at this time, the graduation plans have not been solidified yet. Uh, so we're currently looking at a couple of different plans uh, and those are up for approval through DODEA leadership. And we're also working closely with uh, command and public health to make sure we meet host nation guidelines also. So those uh, plans entail a different variety of physical distancing. Um, uh, but one of the things that we do have already set in stone is we're looking at a, a virtual graduation piece as kind of a keepsake. And so, um, so that will be in addition to our other plans. And, um, and we'll also be having a, uh, at least this proposal of a parade and slightly a motorcade at the end of, 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 of one of our plans. So um, many people have done that in the United States and it's been really great. So we, we're looking to exercise that here. So some of the definite things that seniors, their last day is the 26th of March. And so that's coming up, that's right around the corner. Um, on the 23rd, we're gonna be filming this virtual graduation piece um, as that keepsake piece, one student at a time. And so we're excited about that and also collecting uh, student items and we'll be working with public health to, to, to determine that. So um, depending on the proposal, uh, graduation will either be June 1st or June 2nd, and uh, we anticipate a final plan in the next coming days. Thank you very much for that, sir. Uh, thank you for what your team is doing for our high school seniors. The next question is, what is the outlook for fall sports and summer sports camps, even late summer sports camps? So that's a that's an extremely complex uh, uh, question. So that uh, entails over about a half a dozen countries and many states, even within countries. And so uh, all of that piece, I spoke with uh, Kathy Clemens, the Dodge Europe Athletic Director, about this. And you know, headquarters for Dodea is taking a close look. Uh, uh, at that piece. So currently at this time, there's there's been no determination about what the fall schedule will look like, looks like. Uh, as a coach for Dodea and athletic director for almost a decade, um, please know that Dodea values athletics just like it does all the other co-curricular activities. So they're going to do everything that they can do to, uh, to meet the needs of our students and do that safely. So um, it's my understanding that the organization is, is uh, taking a pause on that and just waiting to see what a, get a, a more clear picture on what COVID-19 looks like during that time. Um, we have received some clarity about summer camps and even the late summer camps. And currently at, at, at this time, all of those camps have been canceled. All right. Thank you for that answer, sir. Uh, even if it did bring us some sad news, unfortunately, we really appreciate uh, everything that Dodea is doing to uh, ensure the safety of our kids. So the next question is uh, relevant to grading policies. And it is, sir, could you explain the grading policies for this last semester and what our students should be aware of with these policies? So that's, a, that's been a big topic of discussion yesterday. Uh, so parents, make sure you check your email. I sent out a, a memo from uh, Mr. Brady, who's the director of DoDe, in terms of what the grading policy looks like. And the easiest way to explain the policy is just to give an example. So. Um, our second semester that we're in is divided into two quarters. We, we went to school for the third quarter and the fourth quarter, we've been in this digital learning platform. So if a student got an A, for example, in quarter three and gets a B in quarter four, uh, uh, Mr. Brady had talked about this digital learning platform causing no harm to students. So the quarter three grade would supersede the quarter four grade. So, um, so if, if a, if a student did very well when we were in for quarter three, they'll, they can uh, uh, expect that grade to be transferred over. Um, if the student got a, a C 
in quarter three and through this digital learning environment really excelled and got an A, they would get that, um, they would get that A. And so I understand that this changes uh, family dynamics quite a bit. Uh, we've, we've kind of taken the carrot out, I, if you will. But one thing I encourage you as parents is that the skill that students are learning in the classroom are much more important than the grade that they receive. So continue to encourage them to be engaged with their, with their uh, teachers and um, everybody is super excited about everything and uh, things have been going well in our digital learning environment. So thank you uh, parents and, and students for doing such a great job. All right, thank you. Really appreciate your answers, sir. Uh, thank you to everyone on the DoDEA team for uh, continuing uh, to do their job so well during these times. The next set of questions are more related to our civilian employees. And so these are gonna be directed to Miss Tammy Mitchell, who is joining us from RAF Mildenhall as a representative of the Civilian Personnel Office. So the first question, Ms. Mitchell, is, I don't feel supported by my leadership as I telework. Expectations are unrealistic and there is a lack of communication. What options do I have? Okay, good afternoon. Um, firstly, it's very um, disappointing to hear that someone feels unsupported um, during this time. Telework can be very isolating. Um, I think communication, as always, is key. I would encourage you to reach back to your supervisor and have that important conversation about how you are feeling and how you personally need to be supported. These, because individuals' um, needs can be very difficult, uh, different, especially during this time. Um, if you're not getting what you need um, from your immediate supervisor, then I encourage you to, to work up your chain to ensure that you are given the support that you deserve and you understand what is expected of you during this time while you continue to telework. Um, if you are experiencing um, concerns of isolation and those type of things, please reach out to us here at the Civilian Personnel Office. I have a list of helping agencies here in the UK, um, and that is for use of the local nationals or the GS civilians that are here who you can speak to, um, different individuals, depending on your situation, um, and they can talk you through any issues that you may be having that are non-work related. All right, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your uh, response to the question. The next set of questions, or the next question, sorry, is again for you, ma'am. And it's, mm -hmm. some civilians are not wearing masks and stating they're not required to because they're not active duty. Is this true? Again, a very, very good question. Um, the wearing of masks is certainly not limited to just military individuals. Our expectation is that is a reasonable request for our civilian workforce as well. So the expectation is that you wear masks um, when necessary, i.e. when you can't adhere to the social distancing. There are some facilities that may open with the requirement to wear masks while within those facilities as well. So absolutely, um, it is um, imperative for your own safety and the safety of others that you adhere to the standards and requests of wearing masks. All right, fantastic answer. Thank you, really appreciate that, ma'am. The next question is, when are our LNDH personnel set to return back to work? And again, a very, very good question. Um, as was spoken about earlier, um, there is a return to work plan um, that is in the process currently. What we would expect that to um, entail is a risk assessment that is accomplished um, for each individual work section um, to ensure that we are adhering to the UK guidance regarding social distancing, hand washing facilities, hygiene, cleaning, et cetera. So obviously telework is still on the table depending on the facilities, but you will slowly be uh, seeing a return to work for uh, local national individuals. So again, keep up to date with your supervisor and your leadership's guidance. Um, that may be a staggered return, again, depending on the facility and the availability of social distancing within the workplace. 
All right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, that's the last question for uh, the civilian personnel office. I just want to say thank you for everything that you and the rest of our civilian personnel do to keep the wing operating. The next set of questions are for uh, Mr. Mark Gusky. He is the RA of Alkenbury Troop Store Manager and is our AP's representative during this town hall. So, Mr. Gusky, the first question has to do with the troop store, and it is, can this out be extended? Thank you for your question. AFES continually reviews operational hours and customer trends and adjusts hours accordingly. When the store isn't open, you can always go to the shopmyexchange.com. We have the system that's been going on for a while now that's called buy online, pick up in store. And you can go ahead, pick some items out that you want. If they're in the store, they'll normally be ready for you the uh, next day. Uh, we also started another program for that buy online pick up in store as well. When you do order those items and they come in, you can pull up to a parking space in the front of the store that's clearly marked. You can dial the number since you've already paid for the item. Uh, once you uh, get the person on the line, they will go ahead and then bring your item out to you. You don't even have to uh, leave your car for that. We're also still doing shuttle requests. We had stopped that for a little bit, but we can get items now from Lake and Heath and Milton Hall on a regular basis. Um, if you have an item that you know that you want, you can even call the store. You don't have to come in. We can check on it for you and let you know if they have it. And normally we can have it within one to one and a half weeks or so. All right. Thank you for that, sir. Really appreciate uh, that response to that question. Uh, it's a fantastic program that uh, AFIS has initiated. And thank you for what you're doing to keep all of us supplied, you know, with the, the essentials of life. The next question is pretty simple and it is do you have any additional updates from AFES? we're still working to keep the items stocked we just received in another truck today with a lot of the um, medical items um, flu uh, flu sickness items painkillers stuff like that so we're still getting uh, a clear shipment of those items coming in. We received hand sanitizer last week, which we've had available in the store for everybody. They've actually put a, uh, a message out today. We don't have to ration the sanit hand sanitizer anymore. Uh, and as we start to get low on that, we're gonna ask other stores if they can send some more to us. We have hand sanitizer machine available in the front of the store as you walk in, so you can always clean your hands before and after you're done shopping. One bad thing is they stopped the uh, the sales flyers that we used to have all the time. They, um, I think it's because of the contact with somebody picking one up that there could be something left on another one. So they've stopped that momentarily, but we just started a, a program today where we're gonna have posters up in the front of the store as you come in the store that are gonna have all the pages of the sales flyers on there. So you can look at those, see what you might want to purchase. And then when you come in the store, you can look around and see if we have those. If you wanna look at it at home, again, you go to shopmyexchange.com and they'll have a, a link that you can click on, which will show you the weekly flyers and you just select the one for Europe and you'll be able to see the things that are available that are on sale. Thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you for that, sir. That's a really fantastic program. And uh, just once again, thank you for everything that the AFES team is doing to continue to support the base populace. Uh, I, I really appreciate it and I'm sure everyone else does as well. So the next question is sort of a catch-all question. And this one is for Colonel Wint. And it is, why is RAF Molesworth not included in these town halls? Yeah, I can definitely take that. I will tell you, we work in close coordination with all of our mission partners across the wing, uh, particularly their, their leadership teams. They participate in all of our weekly crisis action teams and a whole lot more. So we work very closely with all of our mission partners across the wing. The reality, and I know this question was specific to our RAF Molesworth mission partners, but we have just too many to include in something like this in this town hall. Uh, at Moldsworth alone, we work with UCOM and AFRICOM and NATO and others. We have uh, NSA at RAF Menwith Hill. We work with the State Department at RAF Kraut, and there's the NATO Joint Warfare Center and Stavanger Norway and on and on and on. 
So it's just too wide ranging, too diverse a group to include everyone. Uh, and so I've talked personally with some of our mission partner leaders and what they've opted to do uh, is in some cases to have their own town halls for their own organizations. Uh, and then in some cases communicate with their workforce in other ways. Uh, but I will tell you, I'm hopeful that part of our RAF Molesworth uh, workforce from our mission partners and all our mission partners are able to dial in and listen, uh, hear our town hall, get a little something out of it, and then uh, get what they need specifically for their organization from their own leadership. All right, thank you very much, sir. Really appreciate that. Um, so that's it for all of the, uh, the questions that we've received from the base community. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who is involved for your answers. We really appreciate them and fantastic work. So at this point, I'm gonna hand things over to our command chief, Chief Dan Keene, for his closing comments. Yeah, thanks. Hey, first, uh, before I do anything else, I wanna thank the folks that were on this panel. Thanks for bringing uh, your level of expertise uh, out of the community to address a lot of the a lot of the questions and concerns that folks have out there. Also wanna say thanks to uh, folks that are watching us on the net. Uh, thanks for, for caring enough to try to get uh, some accurate information. Hey, I ask, uh, share this resource, uh, share it with your friends, share it with your coworkers, share it with the people around the community. So it, it's very important that uh, we get accurate information out. There. So I uh, ask you to do that. Um, as we progress through this uh, summer of transition uh, throughout our communities, we're going to be faced with a lot of challenges. There's, there's a lot of evolving messaging, uh, particularly with regard to uh, health restrictions, a lot of evolving messages with regard to PCS requirements, things of that nature. Really, really important that you stay plugged in all across our communities and make sure that you're getting accurate information. Utilize all the resources that are out there, but particularly pay attention to the 501st Combat Support Wing resources, and in particular, these town halls. We're, we're trying to make sure that the messaging that we're addressing uh, in the town halls is what is currently on the community's mind. So uh, in, in, that, in that vein, I ask you also um, to get out on uh, the links and ask your questions. Uh, when, when that request is put out for questions, please put those questions in there so that we can leverage the experts against those questions and get you the most accurate information that we can. Uh, Pathfinders, as we transition to uh, our new normal, uh, we're going to need to continue to take care of each other. Watch out for those Pathfinders that are struggling. Uh, but really, 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 we need to adhere uh, to the guidance that's being given uh, by both our local communities uh, and wing-specific guidance. So thank you again for your time. Colonel Wynn, over to you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, as always. Let me just echo uh, what Chief Keen said and say thank you to everyone who's watching, everyone who's dialing in, and a special thanks to all of our panel members who took the time to come here and be a part of this and offer some great news we can use across our wing and across our community. Uh, I would like to just say in closing a couple things. Uh, if you've been watching the news, if you've been reading what's going on, as I imagine we all have, I think we all know the world will never be the same after COVID-19. Uh, people refer to this as something like Pearl Harbor or, or September 11th, where things fundamentally changed about the world. Uh, I believe that is the case too. The world will never be the same again, uh, even as we come out of this pandemic. But I would argue, I think we're gonna come out of this stronger and more resilient than when we came in. You know, one of the advantages, uh, if you will, of, of this time and our inability to travel and as much as Chief Keen and I would love to be out on all of our bases, uh, we're, we're kind of stuck at home like, like all of us. It's given Christina and I the opportunity at home to do some reading and start watching a few series. Uh, particularly, we've been watching about the American Founding Fathers, uh, watching George Washington and John Adams and Alexander Hamilton and others. I will tell you, I, I have learned uh, in the past few weeks, 1776 was a dark time in our American history. Uh, we think of it as this great celebration of independence and the Declaration of Independence, 
But I will tell you, uh, things did not look good for most of 1776. Uh, and yet, we remember, we celebrate our independence and the, the birth of a great nation. World War II, another very dark time in our world's history. Uh, and yet, just this past week, we celebrated VE Day, Victory in Europe Day, the end of the war here in the European continent. I know that 2020 might seem like a dark time in our history right now, and I know we're facing a lot of challenges and we have a lot of struggles ahead, but I am confident that history will remember how we overcame COVID-19 in 2020. I'm confident not just history will remember that, I am confident that our Pathfinder team all across the 501st Combat Support Wing here in the United Kingdom and in Norway are going to be stronger and more resilient because we have faced this down. So again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking time. Please be well. Please don't be afraid to reach out if you need help. Uh, I want to say uh, Pathfinders will continue to light the way. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. So that's it for the uh, Q&A portion and the closing comments portion of our town hall. I just want to remind all of our listeners that uh, there are multiple source of it, sources of information if you're interested in things that are happening around the wing. This recording, for example, will be available on our 501st Combat Support Wing Facebook page, which you can easily find on Facebook by searching 501st Combat Support Wing. And of course, uh, a link to it will be available on our Wing YouTube as well as our 501st CSW app, which you can find on the App Store for both Android and iPhone. Also, we just wanna remind everyone that if you have any additional questions that you felt weren't responded to in this uh, town hall, please pass those questions through, questions through your chain of command or leave a comment on our Facebook posts. And we encourage you to visit as well our 501st Combat Support Wing COVID-19 webpage, follow our Facebook page, and again, download our app for updates. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.